Hey gang, this is a sort of strange wrap-up video. Uh, I had to really push through hard on the X-Wing to get it ready in time for Wonderfest, which happened uh, earlier this month. And uh, because of that, uh, I did video some things, but uh, they uh, sort of fell by the wayside just because I didn't have the time, but I did take some photos. So this will be sort of an odd mix of what I had been doing before, and then like a sort of photo roundup uh, explaining uh, how I got it to the finish line. Uh, it is really, really nice. Very excited. And uh, I'll get into that uh, as soon as I get a haircut. <sighs> ah, ah, feels much better. Okay, so we're here to talk about the x one um, I will show you what I recorded a month ago, uh, and then we'll sort of fill in the blanks to where it is now. So, enjoy. Okay, so... The next phase of this will be uh, cockpit-centric and uh, finishing up laser cannons. Yeah, I've done a little extra work, clearly. Uh, I'd like to point out that the mount cover on the underside has been permanently affixed because uh, the end result for this particular bird is that it's going to be mounted uh, permanently from just this mount point. So it would be best to keep all of this detail around that mount hole. So if this is never coming off and the sides are never coming off, might as well just glue it down. Makes it a little cleaner presentation wise too, which I like. So that sorts the fuselage, right? And then we've got laser cannons. Now my laser cannons again are different from yours probably because I designed this very hollow uh, part 3D printed. Well, Josh did most of the heavy lifting with the, uh, the original dimensions, I, I should clarify. <laughs> and I went to the trouble of having a whole run done uh, professionally cut by KNS brass with the laser cannon uh, brass lengths all pre cut, so it's sort of foolproof. Uh, I went ahead and 3D printed this little guy, and it just really friction fits down there. I'm leaving this loose for the moment, and I'll tell you why in a sec. So, uh, the originals had a heat sink, this little collar, uh, and then another heat sink. And uh, on Red 5, if you notice, the heat sink has a little C shape. Uh, it's not completely symmetrical. That C always lines up with what will be two brass rods coming this way. So that's how that registers. And then the other one will also have its little C-shape register uh, in a similar fashion. And then there's two brass rods that travel from that hollowed spot all the way to this collar. Uh, on every replica ever, it's this has always been too big or this has been too proud and you have to kind of make the brass go whoop, up. This is the very first time, to my knowledge, that it's correct to how ILM did it, where this brass is completely flat against this laser body, and it ends flat against this. It's very, very rewarding. Also, with the Heroes, this little piece on the back is going to move around a lot, uh, and I think over the years it's even changed on, you know, like it's been knocked around or something. Uh, period photography from 1976-ish shows that Red 5s were that far out, so that's what it did. And uh, coming back to this real quick, the reason I'm leaving that uh, free-floating for the moment is I'm going to mount these guys onto the wings, and then I will be able to move this into position perfectly so that they line up, you know, top-down. Uh, that also allowed me to glue this guy in at the correct depth uh, without having to futz with orientation. So it was just kind of a shortcut. So I gotta glue these guys down, and that finishes all four laser cannons, which is awesome. Uh, I have sprayed semi-gloss black Tamiya inside of these engine bits and on the back of the burner cans. Uh, and I'm gonna spray some silver. I'm hoping that will block light sufficiently. I'm not entirely sure. This is a flat black uh, cockpit tub now. This is painted in the correct gray. This will come from below. That will come from above. And uh, we'll sit like that. And the only other piece that gets painted that gray is this assembly 
uh, and there's some other colors I got to add to it, but you can see how quickly it comes alive, which is really, really cool. Um, everybody else is either a combination of flat black or gloss black. Uh, and if it's gloss black, that means I'm turning it silver, uh, except for things like the little graphite, uh, uh, you know, detail that stays black. Uh, and I've got decals. We'll get to that in a minute. So yeah, the next step now is basically painting the chrome silver on anything that's not a flat black. The uh, little uh, shock absorbers, whatever you want to call them, they stay flat black. Uh, there's a couple boxes that go behind the head. Those stay a flat black. Something gets German grayified uh, in a couple places, uh, but I can paint a bunch of stuff silver uh, pretty safely now, which is exciting. So I will do that. And semi-gloss black to me uh, as a base works really well when you hit it with an all-clad aluminum or chrome. It just makes a really nice silver. It's not going to look aluminum, but, uh, but it looks good. I've done that uh, many, many times, and it always looks uh, nice. I think that is gloss black. Yep. So these all get sprayed silver, which is the next step. And then I'd also like to quickly mention that if you remember the electronics have like a little module that blinks. Um, I think I've talked about the electronics. If not, I'll be addressing it shortly. Um, I am drilling holes in these two little readouts uh, so that light can come through them. And the drill I like to use is somewhere around here. Here it is. Um, this is great. This is a little Makita hand drill. You turn it into a gun, pew pew, uh, and it's just sort of a low uh, torque. Well, I guess it's got torque. It's a low speed, high torque. Let's say that. Uh, hand drill. It's hand saver for me. You know, it's a little easier than using the big power drill. Uh, you really don't need that much power. And I'm just drilling holes in here in a couple places, mainly just for uh, a fiber optic light to shine through. And then I've got a clear. I've got a clear um, part, printed part, that will sit over top of that. So, uh, and that is somewhere that is over here. Um, you can see these little clear pieces. They're like the CRT screens, essentially. And this is the sort of gloss black gloves and control stick and our happy little seat. So I'm well on the way to getting this cockpit underway. Um, I should also show pilot's almost done. He's very well on his way. Hello. And the head is almost done also. He just needs, uh, the, f the face is pretty much done. He just needs decals and uh, his, uh, his visor, which really brings it together. So I'm going to spray silver and then uh, I'll come back and show you. Uh, ba next, essentially, is just a series of laying down little pieces of decal and then taking all these little silver bits and putting it where it's supposed to go, uh, according to the A New Hope cockpit reference. <laughs> so it's just going to be a lot of very tedious, small work, uh, which I happen to find very um, sort of meditative, I guess. So there you go. Bam. All right. So, silver. You can see it's shiny silver. And the little parts are shiny silver. So, uh, and some of these are impossibly tiny. Um, so that's always a fun thing to put together. All right, this is a NeoPixel cluster of LEDs. And that is what is entombed now inside of every engine. Uh, each engine is comprised of three pieces, this piece, this piece, and the turkey feathers. I'll leave the turkey feathers off for now. And there's a bit of brass rod. And this just sockets up into the engine can, as you can see right there. So uh, I've done a little bit of testing on the engines. So you can see the magnet, and the brass tube, and the effect sensor. And they are together right now, or, you know, relatively close together. And when they are in this state, this sensor reading the magnetic field, I suppose, uh, keeps these engines at a sort of more magenta cruising uh, effect with the center LED unlit. When the wings open, 
and this sensor is attached to this L bracket, it breaks the connection and moves the pieces just far enough away that it triggers the attack mode state. And these LEDs will intensify to an almost bright white with that little tinge of pink that was in the film, in the first film. And the center LED also fires. So it's a really cool effect where wings are closed and you're in like sort of like cruising mode and then they open up and everything flares to life. Uh, very satisfying that this all worked the way we intended it to. And uh, the next big hurdle will be cramming all of this stuff into the bottom shell, which there is room, but not a ton. So <laughs> uh, I just have to be, you know, mindful of the space I have. Wasn't that a delight? Uh, so uh, just a couple more days work and you have a uh, finished X-Wing. Um, and uh, it's, it is that easy. Um, but all kidding aside, um, there was quite a bit of work that had to be done. Um, primarily, all the heavy lifting with the electronics, physically speaking, uh, was shown in previous, you know, wing build video. Um, routing the metal to get the wires uh, cleanly and invisibly into the body. Um, the only hurdles after all of that uh, was sort of hooking all the wires up and making sure that everything would be cool once this body shells were, were closed. So, you know, you've got this wing assembly and then you have this top and bottom shell that sort of entombs it. And, um, and that's terrifying because uh, once this thing's closed, you're done. Um, I mean, without great uh, time wasting, uh, chipping away and breaking shit open. Um, so if anyone uh, watching has ever built an X-Wing before, you know, and I can't imagine most of you haven't, otherwise why are you even watching this, really? Eh? Well, um, or perhaps you've never built one and you're like, what am I getting into? Uh, a whole world of interesting things. Uh, you have to put this butt plate on uh, before you close it together. Uh, this, uh, I think I had said this before, but if not, uh, the whole droid strip is magnetically attached, magnetically sealed, uh, allowing the Allen wrench to go in and either tighten or loosen the little nylon tipped grub screws that hold um, the wing scissor assembly onto the uh, onto the, the metal rod. That is a great um, option to have a luxury perhaps. Um, the uh, burner cans were, were put on last uh, because it, I could still sit it on its ass while I was painting. Um, the, uh, the paint job uh, it, it's interesting. Um, Red 5 is very garish. Um, you hear my air conditioner cut, cutting on and off in the background. Uh, and there's a, an extended period of time when you're building these things where <laughs> I call it the clown car phase. You're looking at it and you're like, it's totally, it's just too bright. It's just too cartoony. I don't know what I'm doing. I should, you know, give it up. Uh, all that self-doubt creeps in. But once you start addering, once you start addering all of the weathering, um, once you start adding the weathering, it, it really does kind of calm down. Um, Red 5 is interesting in that this butt plate points downwards in most photography from the time. Uh, you know, it is a removable part, so that's where it goes, uh, oriented towards the bottom. And this little Panther G um, fender is unique to this particular bird, so that was also a cool thing to put on. The cockpit, my god, the cockpit is a model in and of itself the way we have all these parts sort of stacking on each other, uh, it's, it's a little jewel. And, and because it's so visible, um, it really does showcase every little bit. You can look into every angle and see something, uh, something unique and something that is crazy enough, uh, you know, sort of a, a faithful reproduction of what was on stage in, uh, in 77, 76. Um, cardstock uh, for the wing root. Um, that's literally what ILM used, just folded cardstock. It hides it hides that uh, little hole where you would be able to see the armature. Um, and on the pyros, that's just a solid, you know, chunk. Um, so that the paint job, I'm next time I build one, I will probably do a video on the paint just so you can see what I'm talking about. 
Uh, it's hard to explain when you're in the moment. Um, I don't paint by numbers. I don't buy pre-made, ready-to-go paints and follow you know, a, a set of directions that everyone as a community has agreed upon. I think that's great that it exists, um, but the joy for me is to get uh, it to a, a, a different uh, uh, sort of area, uh, if you will, because I'm, I'm chasing what this looked like on the filming stage uh, when it was originally done and not necessarily what it looks like now. Uh, and a lot of photographs, most of the photographs do not reflect how vibrant uh, these models were. And all of them were pretty pretty bright. Um, it's, it's sort of shocking. And, and to some people it does read wrong. Totally get that. Um, and that's, uh, that's fine. So I think in that earlier video I had shown you the production made parts um, from 76 uh, that, that really were what let us get this to where it is now. Um, after I had literally finished painting this, uh, no exaggeration, uh, I had finished doing all of the chip work, I had finished doing all of the paint, uh, a little gift arrived at my home, and it is castings of Red 5 itself. This is literally from a mold that someone took of the two missing, as of now missing, they're probably just in a box somewhere uh, up at the ranch. Uh, the shells from Red 5, uh, after they were taken off of the wings for whatever reason, uh, they were they were molded for posterity, and uh, because someone had seen what I was doing, they, they worked their way to me. Um, it's pretty trippy, because this is, again, these are fiberglass, this is, this is another faithful first-gen port of a hero X-Wing. Uh, most importantly, the bottom, uh, the, because the bottom on every hero was vacuum form styrene and therefore all the chip details gonna be different. And uh, I, I, I'm happy to say I got damn close. Um, dimensionally, it's, it's right. That's the most important thing to me. Uh, if we had been off by, you know, a centimeter or something, I would have been bereft. But, um, you know, I've held it up uh, to the original and you know you get right to the end where are we yeah uh, there we go it's 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 long enough it's fat enough it, it's got the right you know thickness it's got the right uh, fatness uh, some of my panel lines are off uh, by you know we're talking like three millimeters at the most in a couple places and it's because of interpreting that it would be right where there's some weathering and it just gets muddy. Um, I have forgiven myself uh, and <laughs> maybe one day uh, you know I'll revisit and, and make another. Uh, the biggest shock was how faceted, you can't even, well I guess you can see it with the shadow, how faceted it goes all the way to the nose. Uh, we thought it sort of leveled out a little bit so it's a hot tip for you X-Wing guys. Uh, this this keel shape goes all the way to the end, uh, which I was told Bondi has faithfully uh, replicated in their models, and of course they would. Uh, Sumi-san and uh, other people are uh, pretty amazing with their their knowledge and, and their, their stuff. So, yeah, sorry, it's just like uh, sort of anticlimactic. Oh, and th then you're done. Here's how it is. Uh, but. Uh, I, of course, will make another sooner than later, probably, and I will probably be able to chronicle the, the back end a little better. Uh, there's no need to revisit any of the wing stuff, right? But uh, once I get it to putting the body together, I'll, I'll shoot another couple of videos, and uh, and then from there, uh, you know, I guess it'll be a paint tutorial. But um, if you want to see it, I'm happy to show you. And just real quick, a uh, little bit of brass uh, to sort of keep the piece locked in and uh, there's the little holes and this literally will pressure fit onto the wing. Uh, actually, it goes on this one and it's pretty amazing. Um, I did that for Wonderfest. I just pushed them in and nobody fell out for the two or three days that it was on display. So that was a relief. So I laser cut a base. Uh, if you go to jasoneatonstudio.com, you can see the final pictures of what this particular bird looks like and it will 
quickly be whisking its way uh, into a friend's collection uh, and then I get to make something else. So thank you for watching all of this X-Wing stuff and uh, I'll see you uh, in the next video, whatever that happens to be about.